I was just talking with my sister the other day how we are just craving simplicity this year and pretty much every year. But somehow last year, being that we were all mostly quarantined and having quiet Christmases, we realized there was so much that we loved about that because it sort of removed all of the traditions that we had maybe fallen into over the years that some of them we didn't really want to come back to. This is a fresh chance to evaluate all of your traditions and to see what is working for you, what is working for your walk with Jesus, and what is working for your family. And then we can talk about how to learn to adjust and say no to some of these things. And if you are experiencing panicky feelings or feelings of dread, that is what this video is about. This video is about creating the Christmas that you've always dreamed of. We can learn to say no, set our intentions, and have a Christmas full of meaning and full of peace. I'm about to give you the best gift ever. Hi, my name is Dawn and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and a homeschooling mom and most of all, a Jesus lover. And here at Living by Heart, my role is to inspire you to connect more deeply with God and your family. Today is about honoring your heart in the midst of the holidays. Even though there is such beauty at Christmas, it really is a mixed bag, right? Because also along with all of the hustle and bustle and the fun and the enchantment of the holidays, there also comes a lot of demands and expectations and pressures that we either put on ourselves or that we experience from other people. And one of the most common things that I feel at the holidays is just a sense of, oh my goodness, things are moving so quickly that I hardly have time to evaluate whether they kind of fall into that camp of life giving or not. And so today I really want to just empower you over your holiday. Because when we're empowered with our intentions and we are really clear about our vision for something, we then are able to evaluate what comes our way from a proactive stance rather than in a reactive stance. And so if I take the time now, just on the cusp of Thanksgiving, heading into the holiday season, to really think through what are my non-negotiables? What do we need the most as a family? And how about this? What would bring the most meaning and simplicity to our lives? Those those questions, when they are answered at the forefront, it makes it so much easier to have a clear answer for other things that don't fit into our vision. And then we can really begin to have really great boundaries around our holiday. And boundaries, remember, they sound like they're limiting us. They sound like they're limiting other people, but truly what boundaries do is they actually free you up to love others more because you have arranged your life to revolve around Jesus and your family and therefore your cup is full and when our cups are full then we can freely pour out to others when we get into trouble is when we don't take the time to set those intentions and to really dream dreaming with our family and with the Lord about what this holiday could look like because then we end up being in more of a reactive place and how many of you know, reactive equals resentment. Anytime we're responding out of obligation or duty or that should word, remember, I've told you before, we cannot should on ourselves. And if you haven't heard that video yet, I'll link it here. We have to learn to answer only to Jesus and we have to honor our own hearts and the hearts of those in our families. And when those things are in their proper order, we find that we're full of life and able to give so so much more. I want to take some time today to give you a couple of action steps in terms of how can you be intentional about your holiday. What would it look like for you to have your dream Christmas? I know, I know, you're probably thinking, oh boy, she's getting really, really unrealistic here. <laughs> I realize there is work that comes with this, especially if you're a mom, because you know, we're pulling together so much. And I feel like there is a way to find joy in the midst of that, particularly when we've evaluated everything through the lens of, is this life-giving 
or not. So when I think about the first step, I really think about like a romantic evening. And if you have a spouse, I would picture you by the fire with some cocoa and you've got a little piece of paper in front of you. And I think it would be really fun if each of you were to sit down and say to each other, okay, what would be our top three dream Christmas items? Now it could be foods that you eat. It could be traditions. It could be new traditions. It could be tickets to an event. It could be just a quiet day at home. It could be like dreaming of Christmas morning in our jammies, drinking coffee all day. Make it a holiday date night. Let that be a new tradition where you sit down and you set intentions for the Christmas of your dreams. Things to ask each other would be, what would make this Christmas full of meaning for us? What would make this Christmas very peaceful? What would just pop joy? What would bring us just joy bombs this Christmas? And really just answering those questions. They're more open-ended and then allowing yourselves to kind of follow the rabbit trails, see where it goes and see if different themes come up. This also doesn't have to take a long time. For those of you who are intimidated by the thought of a long talk, <laughs> because those people are out there, we are not alike, but I do honor you. You can just set a timer. Just set a timer for 10 minutes or 15 minutes and just maybe you talk through one thing, but giving yourself the space to set the intention. And so some of the intentions that I have for my Christmas holiday is I definitely want to do a lot around meaning. I want it to be a meaningful Christmas where Christ is at the center. I also really value simplicity. I like to keep the gifts really simple. I like to keep the gift wrapping very simple. I try not not to do a frenetic pace about anything. I also love to make special food and do special traditions with my kids each morning during our homeschool time. And so those are some of the things that are really important to me. Really, it comes down to those values that I hold. I love meaning. I love simplicity. I love quality time. And so those things surfaced as themes. And then I ask myself, how will I know that this is a meaningful Christmas? How would I know if it was a simple Christmas? How would I know if it's a joyful Christmas? How would I know if I had peace all Christmas season? How would I know if there was lots of quality time? What would that look like? When you answer those questions, you're going to come up with your specific events and things that are important to you. And like I said, some could be old, some could be new. Don't be afraid to let the old ones go. We are in a different season. Every year is different. So so because this video is all about giving you permission, I want to give you permission to not eat the same foods that you always eat. I remember one year my sister made an entire Italian feast for Christmas when we went to her house. And it was so fun. They even printed out cute little menus and there was like pastas and they had the whole Italian dinner with all of the courses and it was so fun. And we used my great grandmother's china and I just remember it. It stands out because she was willing to try something completely out of the box. So don't be afraid to shake it up a little bit. I also love the idea of just really letting presents be from the heart. If you find yourself not wanting to buy or wrap or do all the things material, Having each family member write a meaningful letter to another one is a beautiful gift. I've often heard it said that people wish that they would receive letters with what their eulogy would say long before they would pass away. And I think that's a beautiful idea to really think about like, what do I love about this person? What do I honor about them? What is the mark that they're leaving on the world? What is their legacy? These things can be verbalized and put into a letter form and they would be treasured so much more than a bath bomb so much more than another scented candle, right? And so really going for that meaning and thinking outside of the box and really thinking about what has value from an eternal perspective. I'm a person that loves quality time. I am all about the dates with my husband. And so I remember one year he gave me 12 dates. And so we'd get to go on one each month. And it was so fun to look forward to. So these are just some ideas, just freeing you up from always doing the same tradition. I also want to give you permission to say no to those things that don't fit within your intentions. Sometimes family members have strong feelings about having us at different events or doing things a certain way. And I really just want to empower you to say, that doesn't work for us. 
Thank you though. Thanks for the invitation. Some people struggle with saying no because it feels so abrupt and just saying that doesn't work for me. It's a great way. But what you're doing is you're starting with your holiday vision, with your Christmas dreams. And this isn't a selfish thing because what you're doing is you're taking each opportunity and weighing it against things that you have received from God and your husband and your kids. And those are your priorities. And so remember, we can't become reactive when we're way outside our center sphere. We have our little concentric circles that we've talked about, right? We have our relationship with God. We have our own heart to consider. We have our marriage to consider. We've got our kids. And then comes all the family, friends, and extended family, and you know, colleagues at work and everything. And so we have to have good boundaries to honor those things that are closest in those concentric circles. And when we do this, this magical little thing happens where we have enough in our cups to give away. So once again, when we honor our own hearts, when we honor the hearts of those in our families and of course with Jesus, then we are able to give out of that filled place. When we react and do the obligation thing, that creates resentment and often doesn't fuel the love thing. Really think to yourself, is this something that God is inviting me to? Or is this something that you know, I need to say no to. So it takes practice to discern this, but I do just want to ask you to bring it to Jesus, to really say, okay, Lord, is this something that you would like our family to do? Because sometimes there is a place for sacrificial giving, of course. And sometimes we just have a knowing in our heart that this is something that we need to make time for because it's what he's asking us to do. Everything needs to be evaluated from that lens of Jesus first, of course. And then, we have to look at our own hearts and the hearts of our loved ones. And we really need to consider in this conversation our own limits as well. Sometimes we go past our own limits because we want to please other people. And I'm going to give you permission to not please other people either. I want you to please Jesus and your family. And that is your main concern. And of course, all while still honoring your own heart. So this is the permission. This is the gift that I'm giving you this year is for you to be able to sit down, create your dream Christmas, and learn to say no after you have weighed opportunities that come along. Some you may say yes to, some you may say hard no to, and that is just fine. And remember that when we have boundaries, it's actually allowing us to be more loving. This is really about being empowered as you approach December. I want you to have the best Christmas ever. And it really does come down to having a solid vision and a plan. It also could be helpful to go back into um, holidays from the past and to think to yourself, what hasn't worked in the past? What has felt not good in the past? And how can I work around those or do those differently? Coming at life that way allows us to feel very intentional and clear about our purpose and it allows us to live according to our values. When we live by heart, we are living according to him and not the expectations of the people around them. This is what an empowered Christ-like walk looks like. I can't wait to hear in the comments about some of the values that you hold that you want to carry out this Christmas and I am here to give you the best gift ever to actually follow through on those. You have my full permission to say no to everything that the Lord is not inviting you to. I'm so excited because I just have this feeling that you guys are going to have such a wonderfully peaceful, sane, beautiful, joy-filled Christmas. And let's do it together.